Hi everyone and welcome back to Coding with Flutter. Today I want to talk about my reference authentication flow with Flutter and Firebase which I recently published on GitHub. And I want to focus on this because authentication is a very common requirement in a lot of apps. So the goals of this project are to build a robust authentication flow that you can use in production in your own apps and to follow best practices so that the resulting code is modular, testable and maintainable. And this is a good starting point to showcase a lot of interesting techniques and topics in Flutter. So in the upcoming videos we will start exploring this project in more detail and I will do this by walking through the code and showing you the most interesting parts including state management and the provider package and we will see how to use them in practice. Ok, so let's get started. And the first thing that I want to do is to give you an overview of this application. So over here we have a sign in page with four options and you can use this to sign in with Google or Facebook or with email and password or as an anonymous user. And these are the most common sign in providers that are available in Firebase. However, this application is designed to be independent from any specific authentication library and as a proof of this I had this developer menu where I can choose to use a mock authentication service. In fact, now that I have selected this mock service I can get back to the sign in page and when I press sign in with Google I get a loading UI for a few seconds and then I'm redirected to this home page. And from here I can log out and head back to the sign in page. So by using a mock authentication service it becomes easier to develop and test the app in isolation without relying on Firebase. Ok, so the next thing that I want to show you is this page that we can use to sign in with email and password. And we can use this page to sign in but also to create an account. And in addition to that we have an option to reset our password if we have forgotten it. By the way, I've added client side validation to all these fields so that you are only allowed to sign in if both the email and password are valid. So for the email field, this is done with a regex validator. And this is to ensure that the user types in a valid email. Like this. And the password field has a minimum length. And as you can see, we always get an error telling us why validation has failed. And only when both the email and password are valid, then we can try to sign in. And if these are incorrect, then we get an error. And by the way, all alert dialogues in this application are adaptive, which means that they follow the conventions of the Material or Cupertino design languages. So if I were to run this application on the Android emulator, I would get a material design alert dialog instead. So while this may seem like a simple email and password form, there is a fair amount of logic behind it to ensure that it works well with regards to input validation, error handling and that it has a loading state while a request is in progress. And since this project is production ready, then password reset is supported as well. So in the upcoming tutorials we will take a look at the code so that we can learn how this application has been built and as I said before each video will focus on a specific topic or technique that is in use on this project but unlike some of my other videos we won't be doing any coding from scratch and if you do want to learn how to build this application from scratch then you can enroll in my Flutter Udemy course and this course follows a very linear progression because it starts from the very beginning with an introduction to the Dart language and then it follows with different sections where each one builds upon the topics covered in the previous ones. So if you take this course you will learn in detail about all these different topics and everything will be covered with diagrams and clear explanations. By the way, this course will go well beyond Firebase authentication and we will cover databases and Cloud Firestore in detail so that you can learn how to build a complete real-time application. So once again, in the upcoming videos we will look at some interesting techniques that I've used while building this application and if you want to learn about all this in depth and with a linear step-by-step -step approach then I encourage you to enroll in my course. 
and you can find the link to access this course at a discounted price in the description below this video. Finally, I also encourage you to sign up to my mailing list so that you can be notified when I publish new videos and articles about learning Flutter. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.